intermediate accounting 2B, indirect cash flow method of accounting, more examples. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page, St. Louis Test Prep. And our LinkedIn group now is MBA Accounting and Finance. I'm going to go to three questions on indir indirect method of cash flow that I think were pretty useful that I worked with a student just a little while ago. And I'm going to uh, fit the width here for this. And what I'm most concerned about is what's on the bottom of the page here. There are financials here at the top, but I want to look at the detail of the question first. I am going to scoot it up slightly so we can see that. So we've got 2011 and 10 data, and we have some transactions here in the middle that happened to the business. Lamb was acquired for $100,000 in, in exchange for common stock, par value $100,000 during the year. You'll note, first of all, that land exchange for common stock has nothing to do with cash, so let's keep that in mind. Equipment was purchased in cash. We're given the equipment cost, what it was sold for, the book value, and a loss. Cash dividends were paid. And the question at the bottom is, what was the net cash provided or used by investing activity? So let's go back over to the spreadsheet. And I'm going to go to question five on my tab here at the bottom. The way to set this question up is to first, let's make some T accounts for building and equipment, accumulated depreciation, and land. We have the beginning and the ending balances for each from the balance sheets that we were given. And you'll note that for accumulated depreciation, the beginning and ending entries are credits rather than debits. So my first entry is, I acquire land by issuing stock. There's no cash impact. So on number one, it's zeros. That's the first thing. Number two, all equipment was purchased for cash. So on number two, the equipment account would go up. That would be entry number two. Entry number three, journal entry for the cash, the equipment sale. Okay, We bought some equipment, then we have an equipment sale. So cash goes up. Accumulated depreciation is debited to reduce it. Equipment, the asset account goes down by 10000 And to make the entry balance, we record a debit a loss on sale. A cash dividend is paid in number four. That's not an investing activity. That's financing. We issued stock to get investors and the cash dividend is a payment to them. That's a financing activity, raising money to run our business or paying it off. And then it says in number five, once we've accounted for everything else, we plug in a figure to compute the ending balance for equipment. The ending balance was 80000 We were given that in the balance sheet. To make this balance, we need a $40,000 debit. Cash used to purchase equipment. The building account goes up by 40000 and cash, which is not shown, would go down. So now that we've reconciled the building and equipment account, showing that the building account went up, that's a subtraction from cash. The other thing that impacted cash was the cash we received on the sale, which was 4000 So we have a 4000 inflow from the equipment sale. We proved in this T account that building and equipment had to go up by 40000 to get to an $80,000 ending balance. So 4000 from this entry, inflow, 40,000 outflow from cash to get this increase in building and equipment means that cash flow provided or used by equipment activities went down by 36,000. The difference between the 4,000 inflow and the $40,000 outflow. The cash T account isn't listed here, but you get the idea of what's going on. And finally, that cash dividend had no impact because it's not an investing activity. Acquiring land by issuing common stock had no cash activity. 
The other one that I'd like to do is to use again a template for um, the indirect method. So let's look at 13. So I fit that to the screen and I'm going to scroll up just a bit. It says during 2011 Greta Corporation earned net income of 192000 that included depreciation expense of 39000 and in addition we had these increases and decreases to accounts, balance sheet accounts, based on the inf information which, what amount would be shown for net cash provided by operating activities. Let's scroll back to the Excel spreadsheet excuse me and let's go to tab 13 where that's answered. This is the same template I used in an earlier video. I can't remember where I got it but I think it's great. The indirect method just for operations takes net income at the top we were given that as 92,000 and we reconcile down to cash flow from operations which is 246 and what's in the middle there are adjustments to reconcile from net income to cash flow from operations and you can see that we have current assets here and we have current liabilities here and depending on whether they're an increase or a decrease that determines on whether the number is a positive or a negative. And essentially what we're doing is reversing out things that impacted the income statement. So this is the add back for the depreciation expense. And typically the way you look at these is if we're, we have a beginning and an ending account balance for all these accounts, we look at beginning versus ending, did the account go up or go down, and based on that we add or subtract. So a decrease in accounts receivable would get added back increase. An increase in inventory, 18,000, gets subtracted increase. Prepaid asset, a decrease in prepaid asset would get added back. And you can see under current liability it reverses. An increase in accounts payable gets added increase is a positive number, a decrease in accrued expenses gets subtracted, a decrease is a negative number, and when we add that all up, I've got a sum formula here, when we add this all up we end up reconciling from that income to cash. And I think the hard thing to remember is if it's a current liability, increases get subtracted, so that's an inventory increase. An account receivable decrease and a prepaid asset decrease would get added back. Current liabilities, they get flipped. The account payable increase is added back. The accrued expense decrease is subtracted to get to the cash flow from operations. And it says, other than net income, changes in the income statement accounts are not part of the indirect method for operations. So other than net income, we don't see expense and revenue accounts in this calculation. I wanted to emphasize that. Accountingcoach.com has a nice example that's just on paper. It's not on video or audio, but they have one on paper that I think is a nice example that you can use to fill this out. One other example here, same formula. We have net income that we're asked to solve for. So in this problem the net income was blank. We were given all this other data including the cash flow. We plugged in the cash flow here. We plugged in the changes to the current asset and liability accounts. And we we went backward to get the net income. So sometimes you're given the net income to solve for. That's question 17. In question 13 you're given all this data and have to solve for the cash flow so you can go in either direction. That's as far as we're going to get on indirect cash flow method of accounting, more examples. Not on the web, we have additional videos and spreadsheets that are not on YouTube. Our YouTube channel, Ken Boyd STL, you can email me for a complete listing of all the videos on YouTube. For live one-on-one -on -one tutoring and chat sessions, stltest.net is the site. Here's our email and phone number. Thanks very much, and we'll see you next time.